Alrighty, so today I wanna to talk about something. I wanna read you something that I saw on Twitter. I'm not a big Twitter person, so don't, don't, don't read what I said wrong. But there's this woman named Jojo who I like her stuff. I like, she's a very inspiring young woman. I don't know how old she is. She looks like she's in her 20s. But anyway, let me read. I have to stop sleeping on myself. I have to stop second guessing myself. I have to stop doubting myself. I have to start believing in myself. I have to start encouraging myself. I have to start loving myself more. I have to. So you see this cycle. So it's I have to stop sleeping on myself. I have to stop second guessing myself. I have to stop doubting myself. I have to start encouraging myself. I have to start believing in myself. I have to start loving myself. All right. So what I want to talk about today is the conversation in our heads the conversation in our ears, the conversation that gets in our head and then comes out our lips, okay? It's about our internal conversation that has the ability to become an external conversation and how that either helps us or how that harms us and sabotages us. So think about, and I, you know, everything that we talk about, sorry about this, Every behavior change that we talk about comes with it necessary assessment, right? And what I mean by that is that initially we must observe ourselves. Initially we must observe ourselves. We must observe our behaviors. We must observe the impact of those behaviors, right? Again, I bring it up over and over and over again, autobiography in five short chapters because it's so true. It's so true. It's so true. Nothing occurs without awareness, okay? Well, not nothing. There is such a thing as dumb luck, okay? But the idea is for you to make positive changes that are going to be lasting, that are gonna be within your grasp, not just a one-time deal, but something that you can summon over and over again, a power that you can call on over and over again, a confidence that lies within you. Not just that one-time, that you want to do a cliff dive or not just that one time that you want to do this. That's part of it. Okay. And these things build on each other. So good begets good, positive begets positive, power begets power, game recognizes game and negative begets negative. Okay. So, so I'm going to give you an example. One of my patients came in today complaining that Accessoride didn't pick her up on time. She's scheduled for 8 a.m. They didn't show up till 8.50. They sent four cars. It didn't work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She came in. Finally, she's here. She's late. She's this. She's that, right? And her blood pressure was 168 over 74. Who do you think that is harming, right? So the idea is how do we pay attention to these conversations that are internal and external, conscious and unconscious or subconscious and make changes and get so comfortable with the tools of being able to turn off that negativity, of being so comfortable with the tools of being able to quiet that shortness of breath, of being so comfortable with the tools of being able to quiet that anxiety, of being so comfortable with the tools that you're not worried about what other people are thinking or saying or promising, plus pro or con, right? Because you have the ability and the faith in yourself to make these changes and to have a power, okay? Um, what do I mean by this, okay? First of all, we have to evaluate our own voice, right? So our own voice is, what are the messages that we send to ourselves? Again, conscious, subconscious, right? Who would like to go out to dinner? Well, you know, I don't wanna go out to dinner tonight. It's raining. I don't have anything to wear. I don't wanna get short of breath. I don't like that place. Oh, Susie's gonna be there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Think about the excuses that we make to not do something that we might enjoy. Think about the messages that we send. I am not good enough. I am too sick. I don't feel well. I'm exhausted. I don't have enough money. I'm here all by myself. My life is terrible, right? Or, you know what? This is great. I am here by myself and I enjoy the company. 
I am here by myself with Monkey and Kiddo, and I enjoy the company. I am here by myself, and I am a good friend to myself, and I am good company to myself because I'm smart and funny, and I am intelligent, and I think about things in a positive way, and I'm a good person, and I like to help people. It's like, it's like uh, I forgot the name of the thing on Saturday night, but it's like, look in the mirror and say to yourself, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me, okay? The idea is these messages feed into things, they build, right? So in the same way that shortness of breath leads to anxiety and anxiety leads to shortness of breath. So thoughts lead to action or inaction and inaction or action, depending upon what they are, will either reinforce or dissuade and dispel these myths, right? So if you believe that I'm never gonna get any better, well, guess what? That has an impact on your body. That sends out chemicals on your body that are stress chemicals. That sends out adrenaline. That sends out cortisol. That sends out norepinephrine. That sends out all the stuff that does damage and will reinforce physically and physiologically your belief that you will never get better. Believe it or not, it's true. That's why what I said to my patient, I said, you know what? I said, listen, your pressure's high. I said, you're telling this story, which doesn't even mean anything anymore because you're here, right? You're here and now it's raising your pressure. I'm sure it's causing your blood vessels to constrict. It's making you more short of breath, more short of breath. And that's no good. This is where the healing power of the breath comes in. This is where the calming power the releasing power, the healing power, the refreshing power, the replenishing power of breathing comes in. And I said to her, I said, listen, that's gone. You're here, you made it. So it's not helping you anymore, okay? If it's, if it's gonna help you to get the car there faster, it may be worth it, but you're here already. There's no benefit to continuing to tell this story to everyone that comes by. And in fact, there's a downside to it, a big downside. So instead, I said, you need to breathe it out. And I always ask you, after the first breath, who feels different? And I just felt different after that first breath. And you know what I said to her? I said, you know what? I said, I do that breathing every time a patient tells me a story like that. It sounds funny, but it's true. Because you know what? I, I hear things like that all day, every day. And I have to I have to choose what I'm gonna let inside me because those voices get inside your head and you internalize them and then you find yourself speaking them, right? So it's like they say, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, okay? Um, the idea is you can't, you can't unhear something and you can't unsee something, okay? And you really can't unspeak something, but the idea is you need to build up some type of resilience to this negativity. You need to be able to have some tools and some uh, mechanisms and some protocols and some procedures and some techniques. Your disposal so that at the first sign of trouble, you're gonna be like, oh, hell no. I'm not listening to her, okay? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna breathe because I hear this mess around me and I don't want that. I wanna keep it outside. I wanna keep it at bay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put up the force field. And that force field is, you know it, the breath. Who feels different? Take another one, breathe in. Who feels different? Open it again. Again. Listen to your internal dialogue. Listen to the voices and the thoughts and the, the statements that naturally come to your head. And when you have a statement that says, you know what, I can't do it, start saying something else. Yes, we can. When you hear a statement flash by your, your consciousness that says, I'm too sick, say, I will get better. 
When you hear something that says, I'm too tired, say, I will try my best and do what I can. Because as I tell you over and over again, as long as you are trying your best, as long as you are giving 100% of your maximum effort, you still get 100% of the benefit. But this is a, a balance between positive and negative. And so again, I try to get you over and over again to let go, to relinquish, to release those behaviors that do not serve you well, those behaviors that are toxic to you, okay? And some of these things, for some people, stress is just as bad as smoking cigarettes because they're so stressed out all the time that they're constantly redu constantly producing this adrenaline and spilling in the blood and the arteries are going, oh my God! So I, I need you to, 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 to learn and to practice letting that stuff go. And when you see something good and when there's something that makes you feel good and happy and relaxed at, and at peace, that's what you do. That's what you do. And you know what? It could be a behavior. It could be exercise. It could be eating something healthy. It could be meditation. It could be taking your medications right, etc. And it could be a certain person that you like spending time with that makes you feel good about yourself, right? It could be a television show. It could be some music. It could be a piece of art. But what I try to get people to do over and over and over again is not to become COPD, is not to become pulmonary fibrosis, is not to become pulmonary hypertension. It is to become if, you, if you're no longer there, but to re-become the person that you used to be is to re-become all of the things that make you who you are and all of the things that you love, all of the things that add beauty and joy and happiness and calm and peace and fun and pleasure and laughter and excitement and joy to your life. Do not sleep on those things. Do not, do not forget about those things. Do not sleep on them. Let me go back to Jojo, okay? All those things that I just said, okay? So the idea is, so, so all those things that I said, okay? All the joy, do not sleep on your joy. So all those things that I just mentioned, your joy. Don't sleep on your joy. Don't second guess your joy. Don't doubt your joy. Believe in your joy. Encourage your joy and start loving your joy because those things are who you are, okay? Don't sleep on the music. Don't sleep on the art. Don't sleep on the color. Don't sleep on the style. Don't sleep on the fashion. Don't sleep on the family and friends that you love. Encourage, love them believe in them. Don't sleep on the things that make you who you are. Don't second guess the things that make you who you are. Don't doubt the things that make you who you are. There's only one you. Fight for yourself. You are worth it. Go back to these things and back to the dialogue, right? Every once in a while, we'll hear something that somebody else says. Yeah, look at that guy. He's a jerk. Or, ah, you know what, there's nothing I could do for you. COPD only gets worse and then you die. Or IPF only gets worse and then you die. Or PH only gets worse and then you die, right? Don't let others set the boundaries for you and don't allow yourself to set the boundaries in your head before your body tells you that it's time, right? There's a certain time in all of our lives when we are limited in what we can and can't do, okay? There's gonna come a time in all of our lives when the director yells cut, okay? But we wanna make sure that until we hear that director yell cut, until we hear that referee blow the, sit, blow the whistle, letting us know that the play is over, then you act your butt off, then you play your butt off, then you work your butt off to all the things, towards all the things that make you who you are, that provide comfort, that provide joy, that provide health, that provide this washing over feeling of goodness and richness and vitality and love and warmth and calm 
and peace. And all of that starts with the breath. So if you can't walk today, it's okay. I'll say it in the words of Martin Luther King Jr. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. If you can't walk, if you can't crawl, then breathe. Because trust me, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a firm believer that breathing is where it's at. It's the key to all. It's the key to everything in life. So breathe, breathe, breathe. We're gonna end with a breath. Your homework. Listen to the conversation in your head, in your ears, in your brain. Listen to the conversation that comes out of your lips. You might be part of the problem. And if you are, then we need to work on getting out of that hole quickly, okay? Be aware, be aware. Are you usually one to say the nice thing or are you usually the one to say the nasty thing, right? We all know people like that. We may even be people like that. So the idea is initial step, observe. This is where your diary comes in. Look at, make a list, draw a line down the center, say, these are all the things I did today that were positive. These are the ways that I, I, I sabotaged myself. These are the things I did to promote my own health and well-being. These are the things I did to sabotage myself. At the end of the day, let's see how your list stacks up. And the more you can stack up on the these are the things I did for myself today as compared to the these are the things I did to sabotage myself, trust me, these habits add up. And you're going to see a progression in your life and these things will become more natural to you. Again, good begets good, evil becomes e begets evil. Let's get this snowball rolling in the right direction, all right? Have a great day, everybody. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.